Right, welcome back guys. Thank you for joining me. And anyone that's new, thank you for joining me and welcome. Right, i am not got a power cut. I know I'm in a bit of the dark. There's a reason for it at the moment. Um, I'm gonna turn another Christmas tree. Now, don't go, oh, another Christmas tree. This one's a little bit different. Yeah, I did the uh, little birdhouse with the, the light inside it and quite a lot of people like that. So I've now gone for this one. And I'm putting a light like that inside a Christmas tree. And I'm hoping you can see that, yeah? So right, this is what we're gonna to turn today, okay? So Lisa's gonna hit the lights and we're gonna get turning. I'm gonna put some lights on down here. All right, everything's gonna get bright now. Okay, right, it's me. Here we are. Right, okay, what I've done, now, I put a piece of two by two beach, okay? Mark up your center, dead center, like there, and put your lines where you want, Just you just work out, I, I just worked out roughly where I wanted them. I've got them about an inch apart, the holes. A four mil hole, drill right through, okay? And then, the same on that side, four mil hole, drill right through. That will give you your holes on your Christmas tree. Now on the inside, I've put a 38 mil hole down, that's 30 mil deep, okay? Now it's important to remember how deep you are because when you come to do your bucket at the end, where your light's gonna go inside, you don't want to part it off and cut the bottom of your, your bit off. So that's 30 mil there, okay? That's what I'm allowing. Uh, Sorry, Bruce Sorry. ran the wrong way. Right, it's actually 28, but I'm allowing 30 mil. So when I get that far, I'll put a mark there for where I'm gonna part off. Right, so 38 mil <coughs> hole, that takes the light. And then I've put a 12 mil hole that goes all the way just to there, just past that first light. It just comes to that first bit. Don't go right to the top because when you come in to do your top of your Christmas tree, you'll have a big hole there. Okay, and as usual, I always have a little divot mark in the top because then I, if I want, I can hang them or I put most of them, I, I hang. So, right, that's what we've got. So, let's get started now. I've got the wrong jaws on here, so I'm going to quickly change my chuck. I said before I've got a set of uh, jaws that go inside that are 38 mil so I'm okay with that if you're not you can always do a little jam chuck or make it a little bit longer and hold the outside of it put a tenon on it you can do all sorts really right okay so all right, let me get this opened out on here Right, I'm just gonna grip. Lisa's gonna bring that over. She's already done it, she's ahead of me. Right, I'm gonna bring this up for my center and make sure I'm on center. Right, and I'm gonna leave this in place because I don't want to grip too tight on the jaws because when I turn this thinner, I don't want it to break. Okay, so. There we go, about there. Should be all right. Okay, that's all central. Uh, right, let's get this up. Now, first off, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get it all to round and then I'll be putting some marks on there. Right, put my face shield on. And I'm gonna be using the carbide chisels, obviously, my carbide tools. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna be using the round bar ones. Really enjoying these at the moment. They're, they're nice for all this spindle work. Right, let's get going. So I'm just gonna rough it all down first. Thank <laughs> you. 
finish right tapering if you want. Because you're going to be tapering down, so if you want to take a slight taper, you can. But what you want to do is just get to round. Not round yet. Right, that's round. And we'll take the whole thing just to round. Off of round, it's not quite round, but I'll get there, don't worry. I've got to move the tool rest down a little bit. That's it. Round. Not quite round. So I want to get it. If you've got a thicker bit of wood, it's not so bad, but this is two inches, so I've got to be careful. I don't want to take it down too much there. This is round here. I've got to get where my lines are. Right, I'm going to stop that for a minute. Right, now I want to mark just underneath my holes. There. There. There, and we're going there. Okay, and this bit's going to be my bucket. I'm going to have a, a little bit there for the branch, so you just get that little bit of branch in there. So I'm going to go in just a little bit with the parting tool on those. Just going on the underside of the line. Just going to where I want. Just looking through the gap so I can get it get it pretty much even as it's going. One will be a smaller one. At the moment, I'm going to leave it because I want a bit of fruit there. Right, okay. Just coming with a round chisel. down a bit because obviously I don't want it as big as that. So 
I'm not going to go too small with it because obviously I've got my holes there like that and then in here be very careful not to touch the top of that one or the bottom of that one I should say General cut there, we're getting down now. I shall clean that up then with the part and uh, the uh, detail chisel, it's not a parting tool. <laughs> say with the detail one to clean that up we'll take this one down a little bit more at the top here it's a little bit should be a little bit thinner than that one really that's it that do Keeping my chisel rolled over all the time. Nice gentle, I've got a lovely smooth finish on it already. I mean you can if you want to go flat with it and just remove it quick, that's up to you. If you want to use traditional tools to do it, spindle gouges, you just have to do a little bit more sanding, that's all. those down that's our pre shape I'm going to come in with a detail I need to get this this one's got to be a bit smaller actually I'm going to come in now with this one still a little bit very tiny bit big but we'll come down down there. I've got no slight, slight flat edges. I don't want sharp points to them, sharp edges. I don't like sharp edges. Right, this one's got to come down a little bit more. Now it's when I start to see, I start refining it now. Get basically to where it's got to be. And then we start stepping it down. This one's still a little bit big. Yeah, that's a bit better. Right, okay. I'm coming with a detail chisel. Right the bevel, remember, there's your bevel. Come in, I can come on to there, pick up the cut, come in, give it a little bit here, roll it back slightly, take that out. And what I want to do, and actually want to undercut this slightly, so it's coming in. So 
just like that. Right, I'm looking at there, I'm thinking, I'll take this down a little bit. It's got to be taken down a little bit. It's a little bit too, a little bit too big. So we're going to come across. Now we're going to run a cut down. Yeah, I think maybe get a bit more of a point there. Yeah, that's about right. That's it. Right, I've just got to bring that because that's a little bit too much for the flat. Blend it like that. That's it. Right, now, that one's all right. Undercut, yep. Yeah, this one's got to come down. Got to clear that little bit there. Again, ride the bevel. Pick up the cut. Get round watching that that doesn't catch there. I'm going to come in here. Pick up that cut. Now I want to undercut it slightly. Just a little bit so that when you see it, it's going under. Okay? That's that one, that one, that one. Right, this one. Come for a little run down on this one. Just cut the cut. There we go. Changing hands, coming round. Pick up the cut. Roll it back slightly, and we're going to undercut. There we go, right. Everything feels fairly smooth. You can feel the hole, so it's a little bit deceiving. Right, that one's okay. Now we've got to get to where our trunk is. I said there's uh, 30 mil up is our hole. Let's come this side. Right, our hole comes up 30 mil. So we're there. Right, so we mustn't go below that. Otherwise we're in trouble. Party tool. Right. So I'm actually staying above the line, and I can go down to there, but I don't want to. go too thin with that because remember you've got a 12 mil hole going up the centre of it. Don't get carried away. No one's going to be uh, worrying about what size your trunk is. They're going to be more, oh wow, how would you get that to light up? Right, so I'm coming in with the detail. Got to be careful with it, ain't got a lot of room. I just want to undercut this. There we go, that's a little bit of undercutting. Now I've got to bring this down. Right, 
Put my bucket down. And I know I can come down to those cup jaws there. Grab the square one for the next. Again, hands and over. Okay, just feel the touch of the jaw there, it's just there. Right, it's right. Come on, boy. I'm going to park that very bottom bit, I don't think I'm going to have to bucket it in. Although I might do, it might be alright. Yeah, it should be alright. Right, I'm going to come up this way. I want to soften the edge slightly, just slightly. Soften it. Right, and now I want to put a couple of little bits of jaw down there. Just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Right, so. Okay. Use my wire just to burn a couple of lines on that. Oops, sorry. Let go of it. There we go. Right, now we're going to do a little bit of sanding. Not a lot, obviously. Well, I'll just have the vacuum here. I'll just have this one that I hold. More, got to do a bit of sanding for where the holes are. Where the, where the holes are there. So. I'll leave that bucket at that size, it's alright actually. A little bit on the inside there because it's done with a parting tool. Right, so I'm going to no doubt Lisa will want to paint this anyway. Use her airbrush. Right, there we go, I think that's about it. Alright, let's have a look and see what she looks like. See whether it will turn out alright. Well, yeah. there's not a bad finish on that. Okay. Hope you can see that finish there. Lisa might zoom you in a little bit just so you can see the finish. Okay. That's it. And then we pop that out. Like I say, I always keep the little hole in the bottom, in the top, I mean, in the top. That's the bottom, that's the top. Because, uh, well, just a, you can blow through the holes and make sure there's no sawdust in them. There we go. I always leave that because it gives me the chance to hang it if I want, or you can. I mean, you could get one of the little map pins with the little coloured ball on the top, put it in the hole and it, uh, put a little bubble on the top. <laughs> and now all we do is we pop our little light in the bottom, sits right up inside. We can turn that on and I don't know that you'll see that in this light. Let me turn some lights off here. It's, uh, I can see it in the dark bit. I don't know that. 
you're gonna i don't know that you're gonna see it yeah at least you turn the lights off and shut the door for a second and you should see it there if i get it at the right right angle obviously night time you'll you'll see it better okay and there's your lights and it shines right through even up to the very top one and they're flickering lights so they just as you can see they just flicker slightly now those will go out of home bargains 99p for four so bargain okay there you go right well guys thank you for joining me and i know people uh Moaning about Christmas stuff already, but well, if you're going to get a uh, half a dozen of these done to put on your mantelpiece, then you need to get turning. You've got Christmas trees, you've got snowmen to do, you've got angels to do, you've got little birdhouses to do, and you've got your, um, well, of course, my angels, because there was a comment that my angels didn't have wings. Well, angels have to earn their wings. My angels only get wings when someone subscribes. So if you want to see my angels get their wings, hit the subscribe button. Be most appreciated. But anyway, thanks for joining me. And there, there's a, a couple of Christmas trees. Okay, that light up. So of an evening, put them on the mantelpiece. They're going to look lovely Christmas time. Warm and cosy. Thanks for joining me, guys. Till the next one. Toodle pip. Happy turning. Bye guys.